it really doesn't get any easier to talk about it. I guess I'll, I guess I'll start with when I met him. It was back in October 2021. I just saw that there was this new booktube channel and I always like to welcome new booktubers and his channel name was Criminali. That that should have been the first red flag for sure. At first he seemed really nice. I mean, he had a British accent, but other than that, he seemed really nice. Hello, I'm Ollie, and this is Crimin' Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. And he was and really today, nice. All sorts of things, I'm going to be about a very Until he wasn't. He started talking about this 100 book challenge, basically recruiting people into it by the masses. I saw everybody join in all of famous faces around here, Michael K. Vaughn, another Bibliophile Reads. It was surprising to see how many people were essentially being coerced into this challenge. It was incredible to see how many people were essentially being brainwashed and recruited into this cult. I accepted the challenge because I wanted to support him. I wanted to support Ali. And that's when he started ruining my life. Next thing I know, all my bank accounts are frozen. They're all drained. I mean, I only had like $20 in it, but, but still. Or it, it could have been that I, I had like the Netflix auto payment on. Could have been that. Shit. But no, I'm pretty sure it was him. And then I started finding matches on my bookshelf and little notes that said, burn it all, you don't need it anymore. Why do you need books? You're not gonna buy anymore. And I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I played by his rules, even his sick, twisted, deranged rules. I played by them and I kept reading. I don't know how I did it. Even when I didn't get any sleep, even when I thought I was going to die because I hadn't been to a bookstore for months, I kept reading. And I think it was Jesus Christ helping me to <laughs> I think it was Jesus Christ helping me to read. And I persevered. And I said to myself, I'm not a victim, I'm a survivor. If I could say anything to him right now, I would say, I beat you. Hello everyone and welcome to another installment of Plagued by Visions and what I'm sure is going to be a very very cathartic installment uh, because I am here to tell you that I have completed my 100 book challenge. Now, for those of you who might not have been in the know, uh, there's this YouTuber named Criminali, who I already <laughs> introduced very graciously, uh, who back in November, I wanna say, issued a, a challenge, or he didn't really issue it, <laughs> despite what I just said in the intro, uh, but he said that he himself was uh, placing, he was placing himself on a book ban and that he wouldn't buy any new books until he read 100 of the ones that he already owned. And uh, hearing that, I thought, I feel like I need something like that to push me towards reading all that stuff that's back here and uh, not be so concerned about bringing in new stuff, uh, as I'm sure 
a lot of book lovers might <laughs> relate to. Uh, so when I saw him doing that, I said, oh, sounds perfect. Count me in on that. And uh, that was back in November. It's been about eight months. <laughs> and in that time span of eight months, I managed to read 100 books of the ones I already owned, uh, plus other ones that came in. So one of the caveats was that I could still receive books as gifts or as book exchanges. Um, and I read a couple of books that were given to me as gifts during that time period. Uh, and of course they didn't count towards the challenge. Uh, you could only count books that you already owned. So I, I did read more than 100 books in that eight month time span, but, uh, I mean, <laughs> I was being dumb, I guess. I wasn't, my head wasn't in the game, but nonetheless, I managed. I could have finished a little bit faster, but that's okay. And yeah, it feels, it feels good to have accomplished something in life, <laughs> I guess. Um, honestly, when I was like in book five, I was like, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but I persevered. And then when I was around book 40 or something, I kept thinking, I, I can do this, I can do this, and I did. So I'm going to be reviewing the 100 books that I read uh, for that challenge in this video. Now, of course, they won't be the regular kind of reviews that I usually do, because those tend to run at like 15 to 20 minutes per book. If I did that, would be here for a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the list. I have the list off screen. You can't see it, but I'm reading <laughs> through it and uh, I'm going to go through each title, just say a few words about it and then give you my star rating for each of them. Uh, I have to admit some of the books that I read for the challenge, I just kind of tore ass through them <laughs> because I just wanted to get it done, especially towards the end. So I might not have a lot of words to say for all of them, but I will say within those 100 books that I read, there were some definite new favorites in there that, that I will tell you about and you'll see by the five star rating and all that. And I think that was the biggest takeaway for me for this challenge. I, I did this because I love buying books. Of course, we all do. I love, uh, you know, going to thrift stores and used bookstores and perusing their dusty piles of books and seeing what catches my eye. Uh, nothing wrong with that, right? But I think Justin from This Justin, who's another uh, booktuber who also undertook this challenge, uh, he, in his announcement video where he said he was also doing the 100 book challenge, he said something that I thought was just so magnificently put and really resonated with me and my own reasoning as to why I undertook this challenge. And he said, uh, what he said was, I might be, I might not be quoting it exactly, but he said, I love buying books and I love reading, love both of those things, but I don't want to love buying books more than I love reading. And I thought that's that's exactly it for me as well. I, I love acquiring books and I love reading through them, of course, but I think reading them should be the main goal, right? You should buy books unless you're kind of like a book collector or something of the sort. But if, if, if you consider yourself more of a reader, then I think you should place a bigger emphasis on getting through the books and reading them. So. Uh, this challenge was perfect for that. Um, did I entirely succeed at the challenge? <laughs> I mean, technically I never broke the rules. I didn't buy any books. I didn't purchase any books with my money <laughs> in the time period that I was doing the challenge. I didn't break that sacred rule at all. But like I said, there were caveats, uh, <laughs> and there were loopholes. And those were certainly exploited. Uh, I did acquire <laughs> quite a few books while I was on the challenge, because like I said, I could still get them as gifts or do book exchanges, things like that. And I did a lot of that. <laughs> I received a lot of books from viewers. And of course, I don't regret that at all because I, I, I'm just touched by the fact that people want to send me stuff. I mean, and I always try to send stuff back as much as I can. So. Uh, I, I do love the idea of like book exchanges and getting to know my viewers through through that. You know, like I think maybe you like this book. They give me some that they think I might like. So I got a, quite a few books through that process. And um, yeah, the the TBR I guess TBR referring to 
the list of unread books on my shelves definitely went up <laughs> as I was doing this challenge. But then I kind of whittled it down towards the end and I said, okay, I'm not accepting any more books until I finish all this. Um, and I still did accept a couple, but not as much as I was <laughs> towards the beginning. But yeah, I think it was successful just in the sense of, uh, you know, pushing me to excavate everything that's on here. I mean, I, again, putting myself back into that mentality of I purchased these books because I saw something in them, something in the cover, or the synopsis or s some kind of recommendation, etc. I saw something that made me go, I want to read that. That sounds interesting to me. I want to check that out. And bringing that to the forefront of my <laughs> mind while doing this was definitely something that I really needed. And, and I think that's the kind of takeaway message for this challenge that, that I want to give to anybody watching, whether you're a booktuber, just a book lover, blah, 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 is that, you know, just try to remember if you don't want to go cold turkey and just stop buying books like I did, that's fine. But but I, I would push you towards trying to be more conscious of this fact, right? This fact that your shelves are already replete with stuff that interested you. I, I assume that's why it's there. And I assure you, there's probably your new favorite book or a new favorite book of yours already waiting for you on your shelves, just waiting to be picked up, waiting to be read. Uh, and, and I would encourage you all to, to sort of keep that at the forefront of your mind just a little bit more and, and you know, read the things that, that you bought you know go through them or at least give them a chance and and i'm quite happy that i did a lot of that for sure so so this challenge some else but a lot of w's as well so i don't regret doing it at all and of course ali criminali you should check out his channel it's fantastic uh he uploads quite regularly which is something that i <laughs> MV, but uh, he, all joking aside, I know we all like to joke around here on on, on the booktube community that he's this criminal mastermind, this <laughs> this evil tyrant who forced us all into this uh, demonic challenge and all that. <laughs> but I think it's good to sometimes set all the joking aside and 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 just say, you know, Ollie, thank you so much for coming up with this challenge. I really did enjoy myself. And I enjoyed undertaking it. Uh, felt a little bit of, you know, you think you're immune to things like FOMO, but then they start to happen to you and you're like, oh shit. Uh, because here on BookTube, you know, constantly watching other BookTubers do their book hauls or uh, talk about, you know, what they're going to be reading for book clubs or, or readathons. And I think, oh, I don't own that book, but I can't buy it because I'm on this <laughs> challenge. And, uh, you know, everybody's buying all these books and acquiring all these books and talking about all these amazing books that I want to read all of them, but I can't because I have to read what I already have. There was a little bit of that. But overall, I would say, Ali, uh, you did a tremendous job coming up with this challenge. Uh, I was honored to take part of it, and, and I am even more honored to be able to say that I completed it. Uh, I'm very proud of that. It's one of my biggest accomplishments in the last couple of years. <laughs> so, yeah, because uh, some people failed. I'm not going to say who, but some people failed. Ali and... Uh, Greg from another Billy Fall Reads completed this in like two weeks <laughs> or something like that. Uh, I, I was just, uh, it's kind of torture to to watch Ollie constantly sort of update us like, oh, I'm on book 75 now. And I'm like, cool, I'm on book 10. But <laughs> uh, all in all, it was a good time. And now we're going to get into the reviews. Like I said, very brief, succinct reviews of each of the titles that I read for this challenge. Not gonna linger too much on any one of them, but here we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go through this 100 book list, and I'm gonna just give you a few words on it. Uh, we're starting off with a lot of nonfiction because I started doing this challenge around the same time that I started doing a nonfiction November. So you'll see a couple of patterns <laughs> of certain kinds of works that I started reading a lot of. So. I'll give you the heads up of what transpired throughout these months. So book number one was Bad Indians, A Tribal Memoir by Deborah Miranda. Uh, this was very haunting, heartfelt, and it was a very illuminating account of a part of California history that exists 
sadly pretty much as a ghost so it was phenomenal four out of five book number two was fear and trembling by soren kierkegaard uh, a surprisingly tender philosophical look at resignation and the vertiginous plunge into religious faith uh, so I really enjoyed it, even though I'm atheist. So three out of five. Book number three was In the Dust of This Planet by Eugene Thacker, which was a whole lot of disquieting truth about nothingness. But he talked about black metal. So that was rad. So three out of five. Uh, book number four was Nothing But Black in Teeth by Cassandra Ka. It was okay. But the, the pseudo meta humor in it really, really grinded my gears. But Overall, uh, three out of five. Book number five was The Weird and the Eerie by Mark Fisher, which was a really clear and concise explanation of the concepts of weirdness and eeriness in both fictional and social settings uh, with a surprising Marxist twist. So that bumped it up to a four out of five for me. Book number six was The Haunted Mask by R.L. Stein. You can see I started picking up some of the shorter ones. <laughs> uh, and this one, I liked it, especially because there was a lot of like, kids first body horror type of things that kicked in three out of five book number seven was the roundhouse by louise erdrich which was really difficult to read very bleak but ultimately i thought it was a very important and rewarding look at the derelict state of our justice system and how it abandons native women that was a four out of five book number eight was the master by guy and smith which was a buddy read with criminali uh the coolest scene involved a jar full of foreskins and that's about all I remember. <laughs> two out of five. Book number nine was The Devil's Home on Leave by Derek Raymond, which is book number two in the Factory series. This was an ugly, ugly fucking book. And I loved it so much. Five out of five. Book number 10 was Hog by Samuel R. Delaney. No comment. Three out of five. Book number 11 was Blood Crazy by Simon Clark, which was a buddy read with the one and only Caleb from down in the comments. <laughs> it was uh, really bloody, really violent, but it never loses sight of its really sentimental tone, which was cute. Um, that one was a 3.5 out of 5. <laughs> Book number 12 was Damnation Alley by Roger Zelasny, which was cool as fuck, thrilling, and short and sweet. Uh, and thank you so much to Michael K. Vaughn, who actually gave me the book as a gift. Uh, that was a 3 out of 5. Book number 13 was Negative Space by B.R. Yeager. That was a true literary black hole. <laughs> it was really bleak, heavy, feverish, and so, so beautiful. 5 out of 5. Book number 14 was Suicide by Edouard Levet. It was pretty much just a meditation on life and death, uh, written in Levet's last moments. And here he laid out all that was left to say to him. And that was incredibly haunting. So that was a four out of five. Book number 15 was A Sorrow Beyond Dreams by Peter Handke, which was really strange. <laughs> there was a really strange imagination behind it uh, because it was regarding his mother's death. Uh, I don't know if I really loved it, but I didn't hate it. Three out of five. 16 was The Sorrows of Young Werther by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. And this is the beginning of romanticism and the beginning of a great heft of emotional calamity ingrained in our culture. A true classic, five out of five. Book number 17 was Funland by Richard Lehman. And there's a scene in it where a girl makes a boy clean ice cream off her vagina. Enough said, <laughs> two out of five. Book number 18 was the stories of Breeze DJ Pancake by Breeze DJ Pancake. Uh, this was very angry, desolate little snippets of decay. It was so evocative, so all-consuming, brilliant, five out of five. Book number 19 was Eyes by Anna Kavon. Delirious, emotional, weirdly thrilling, very, very pretty prose. Four out of five, I loved it. Book number 20 was Solar Storms by Linda Hogan, which was such important cultural heft to it. It's an exploration of how tradition faces up against modernity and how the past insists on staying known. All that stuff, brilliant, five out of five. Book number 21 was The Secret of Ventriloquism by John Paget, 
which was genuinely unsettling to me and weird with a capital W. <laughs> uh, there was a story or two that I didn't really care for, so I guess 4.5 out of 5. Book number 22 was The End of Alice by A.M. Holmes. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, mostly like, I just felt this urge of like, can you take a book to therapy? Not therapy for me, but for the book. That's how I felt. <laughs> 2.5 out of 5. 23 was Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. You can see I was on a bit of a streak here. <laughs> so here Nabokov really just wrote a book that unmasks truth. It's the truth behind abuse, but with very lovely words. It's an amazing thing to behold, but it was a very horrid story. <laughs> so I give it a 3 out of 5. Book number 24 was Psycho by Robert Bloch. This was a reread and I felt like it still holds up as this important uh, watershed moment for modern horror, for sure. Five out of five. Book 25 was The Monstrous Feminine, Film, Feminism, and Psychoanalysis by Barbara Creed. Um, I read this primarily for the essay on the film version of Psycho after I read the novel. Um, so the analysis here is a bit too culturally insular, but it's really accessible and really really entertaining actually for a book about theory so 3.5 out of 5. Book number 26 was Off Season by Jack Ketchum. Uh, this was a buddy read with my homie Black Eager Doe and this book made both of our cannibalists quiver with fear and anticipation. <laughs> and there goes the monetization. Uh, brilliant brilliant novel 5 out of 5. Book 27 was Homosexual Desire by Guy Hockenham. Uh, I read this to prepare myself for my review of Hog, which still hasn't happened, so as you can tell, the book didn't help me at all. <laughs> but still, it was a nice, refreshing expression of homosexuality and its place in politics and society. So, 3 out of 5. Book 28 was The Powers of Horror, an essay on abjection by Julia Kristeva, another reread. Uh, absolutely one of the most outstanding works of nonfiction that I have ever read. It's, it's very strangely comforting since it just maps out where exactly the abject plays into culturally and also how structuralism's uh, nearsightedness just jettisons us undesirables. All those dynamics beautifully, beautifully examined. Five out of five. Book 29 was Wonderful, Wonderful Times by Elfried Jelinek. Uh, I included this in my latest installment of Most Disturbing Books, so uh, pretty brutal but also weirdly playful, kind of, and ironically austere towards the end, especially. A big what the fuck, I guess. So, three out of five. <laughs> Book 30 was Freedom is a Constant Struggle, Ferguson, Palestine, and the Foundations of a Movement by Angela Davis. Uh, this was a nice introduction to the movement of societal liberation, but I think it should be read as a primer to the rest of her work. So. As an introduction, 3 out of 5. Book 31 was Deadhead by Sean Hudson. This was a buddy read with Alex the Bookubus. Uh, I loved the snuff film elements in this and someone gets killed while Enter Sandman by Metallica plays in the background, so 4 out of 5. <laughs> Book 32 was Penance by Rick R. Reed, which was kind of unsettlingly relishing in its horrific details of abuse, which I wasn't down with. But in the end, I think it was a powerful denouncement of evil, even if it was a bit suspicious in some of its movements. Um, three out of five. Book 33 was Negrophobia, an urban parable by Darius James. This was irreverent, transgressive, full of wit, on top of being a really acidic social commentary and a horror show on top of that. Great. Four out of five. Book 34, another reread. Uh, 1984 by George Orwell. Um, it's still great. I don't know what else I can add to its conversation in a single phrase. Four out of five. <laughs> Book 35 was Blood and Guts in High School by Kathy Acker. Uh, this was really kind of like itch inducing. <laughs> it was like a filthy, filthy exploration of sexual objectification, but from the point of view of the objectified, which was really weirdly heartfelt and also hilarious <laughs> and this was a three out of five book 36 was this symbiotic fascination by charlie jacob um splatterpunk with a dash of purple prose and, and really likable original characters uh, it was quite a thing to behold and quite insane <laughs> um 
four out of five. Book 37, and here is where I started to participate in Middle Grade March, which was uh, an event. Uh, I didn't make a video on it or anything, but basically reading a bunch of middle grade books. Uh, for March, I thought it was great because middle grade books tend to be really short and they read really fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I needed. So book 37 was The Boy with Dinosaur Hands, Nine Tales of the Real and Unreal by Al Caruso. <laughs> uh, very horrific for a kid's book. It had negative reviews <laughs> from outraged parents on Goodreads, which means, of course, that it kicks fucking ass. So three out of five. Book 38 was The Witches by Roald Dahl. Um, a reread, but I hadn't read this since I was a kid, but I found that it's still full of whimsy and magic. And, and it's very touching, especially towards the end. Four out of five. Book 39 was The Twits by Roald Dahl. Uh, not as whimsical as The Witches. <laughs> it was really mean-spirited and vile, which is fine by me. And you would think I would prefer this kind of Roald Dahl story, but I prefer the more tender doll. So this was a three out of five. Book 40, another nonfiction, uh, Gothic Imagination in Latin American Fiction and Film by Carmen Serrano. Uh, I felt like it was a little too limited in the scope of what it analyzed. It didn't really explore the possibility of Latin American Gothic fiction in a broader sense, but as far as mapping the margins of its thesis, it was quite a compelling read. So that was a 3.5 out of 5. Book 41, uh, I, I read some pretty dense nonfiction, which is another thing that I'm really proud of, is that I didn't shy away from these sort of like dense and theory heavy books. I tackled them, took me a while, but uh, I persevered. Because as you see, book 41 was language, counter memory, practice, selected essays and interviews by Michel Foucault. Um, I only really recall his essays on transgression and where he lays out his sort of at this point gestating working theory on biopower, but that was enough to make this an incredible and, and I felt kind of essential read for anyone interested in Foucault. So that was a four out of five. Book 42 was Veronica y otros cuentos fantásticos by Rubén Darío. Uh, this is a short story collection from the um, Uruguayan. No, Nicaraguan writer. Uh, really strange tales of the supernatural and bizarre. Um, I did not expect that from a modernist Latin American writer, so I was pleasantly surprised. Um, they were kind of short, not much to say on them though, so three out of five. 43 was The Animal of Therefore I Am by Jacques Derrida. I don't claim to have understood everything that was going on here, but uh, Derrida talks about animal consciousness in a very loving and sincere way, and I vibed with that, so four out of five. Book 44 was The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. I don't recall why I reread this, nor do I remember much of anything about it. I mean, what what else can I say about The Prince? Four out of five? Book 45 was The Theater and Its Double by Antonin Artaud. Uh, Artaud is really sure of himself <laughs> and how he's gonna piss on tradition and create a new way of experiencing art. And I'm pretty sure he succeeded at it too. So this was tremendously inspiring. I have to say <laughs> this was a four out of five. Book 46 was Survivor by J.F. Gonzalez. It's just a really shitty book with shitty writing, shitty characters, laughable horror, but it was kind of funny. So two out of five. <laughs> book 47 was Nightmares in Ecstasy by Brendan Vedito, which is a short story collection. I thought it was beautiful, calculated writing in here, and it shows just such impassioned reverence towards Barker and Cronenberg inspired body horror, and it was just hard not to enjoy. So four out of five. Book 48 was Maldoror and Poems by Comte de l'Autremont. Uh, quite simply, one of the weirdest most entertaining and bizarre books I've ever read. Uh, three out of five. Book 49 was Lust, another one by Alfred Jelinek. Um, Jelinek's devotion to detailing violence in rhyme and wordplay and with such numbing, revolting detail is a truly admirable but hard to stomach project. So three out of five. Book 50, it was Regarding the Pain of Others by Susan Sontag. As some of you might know, I used this extensively on my video about Peter Sotis' is Pure, uh, because Sontag really was singular in her approach to the concept of seeing, and this book details her philosophy so succinctly and powerfully that it really turns your head when it comes to regarding violence. Five out of five. 51 was The Ecstasy of Influence, Nonfictions, etc. by Jonathan Lethem. 
Uh, I don't really care for Jonathan Lethem after this. <laughs> the titular essay was a pretty inspired approach uh, on the place a writer has in the midst of a literary tradition. I found it somewhat compelling, but that's about it. Mm, overall, two out of five. Book 52 was The Cellar by Richard Lehman. I love this stupid ass book, so three out of five. <laughs> book 53 was Culture Crash, The Killing of the Creative Class by Scott Timberg, more nonfiction. Uh, definitely in need of an update given our current times. <laughs> uh, there is so much more to say, but as a conversation starter on the role that the arts have played in America and the resulting vilification of them, it was quite powerful, so 3.5 out of 5. Book 54 was Hide and Seek by Jack Ketchum. Um, his writing, my, it's just like a match being struck and then it burns your finger before the flame dies out. Ketchum is just the best at tension and ugliness. This was a 4 out of 5. Book 55 was Watership Down by Richard Adams. I found it really boring and predictable with really plain characterization and I thought it really pales in comparison to the film adaptation, so two out of five. Book 56 was Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller, a reread and an outstanding play full of lamentation in a familial and also societal scale. And to me, this is just America in mourning, you know, just foreseeing the great assault on the working class that was to come. Amazing. Love it. Five out of five. Book 57 was Triage, a collection of three stories by Jack Ketchum, Richard Lehman, and Edward Lee. This was a mixed bag <laughs> in the truest sense of the word, but nothing in it was terrible per se. So three out of five. Book 58 was The Doll Who Ate His Mother by Ramsey Campbell. Really bizarre, really sort of gravely told and uncomfortably just damp <laughs> and sobering in the way that British horror excels at. So three out of five. Book 59 was The Maimed by Hermann Ungar. Brilliant, monstrous, painful, just a long agonizing whimper. You know I love that. Five out of five. Book 60 was another reread, Native Son by Richard Wright. And to me personally, the most clear-cut depiction of the birth of violence and chaos, like nothing comes close. Five out of five. Book 61 was La Carne de René by Virgilio Piñera, a Cuban gothic-ish novel. Weird, a bit gay, and entertaining as fuck. 3.5 out of five. Book 62 was Delta Venus by Anais Nin. I didn't like this. Uh, it was transgression for titillation and the style just didn't speak to me the way it speaks to her fans. This was my first by Anais Nin. Disappointed. Two out of five. 63 was Tampa by Alisa Nutting. And now that I finally read this, I have to say it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> it's sort of like a self parodying porno shoving American fetishization of abuse back down its own throat. I enjoyed it actually. <laughs> I would give it a 3 out of 5. 64 was The Night Walker by Thomas Tessier. This is when I started Horror Mayhem. Uh, this was a really angry, confused book about a man turning into a monster, but in a way that makes you question when exactly the transformation takes place. Good shit. 4 out of 5. Book 65 was Slimer by Harry Adam Knight. People got slimed and it was camp. 3 out of 5. Book 66 was read by Jack Ketchum. This was a buddy read with my good friend, Mr. K over on Instagram. Um, not the strongest Ketchum novel, but one of the most fast paced, really gripping and economically told without foregoing dread. So yeah, some of the romance bits in it, however, were eye rolling, and very tiresome. So 3.5 out of five. Book 67 was Aura by Carlos Fuentes. Hauntingly beautiful, one of my favorite pieces of literature ever. It is always such a pleasure to reread this. Five out of five. Book 68 was Malpertu by Jean Ray. Very convoluted and bizarre, full of melodrama, just weird supernatural phenomenon, lots of wild secrets, but it's all told in perfect gothic form. So four out of five. Book 69 was Who Goes There by Jean W. Campbell Jr. Uh, this is the part of horror mayhem that I never got around to wrapping up. 
which is embarrassing but oh well. Uh, this one, uh, there were certain details in this novella that were absent in the film adaptations. Uh, you feel like the onset of apocalypse and ruin just much more palpably here. Great, four out of five. Book 70 was The Great God Pan by Arthur Mackin, a horror classic that I'm so glad I reread because when I first read it in high school, my pea-sized teenage brain just thought, this is boring. But now I see how it's grazing of social taboos and its powerful method of unraveling weirdness and dread have cemented it as a classic. It's great, five out of five. 71 Live Girls by Ray Garten. This was another buddy read with Alex the Bookubus. And we both really enjoyed this salacious and weird and bonkers descent into the city underbelly of vampire nightlife and there's vampire blowjobs so that's always good 3.5 out of 5 for me book 72 was in love and trouble stories of black women by alice walker powerful stories about the place that black women occupy not just in society but in the general realm of literary imagination uh, and uh, the revenge of hannah kamoff was my absolute favorite from this collection four out of five. 73 was an anonymous book titled The Incest Diary. You can see why it's anonymous. Uh, legitimately unsettling. It's very crudely told without any regard for propriety or producing meaning or any of that kind of stuff. It's just a direct punch to the gut. Four out of five. 74 was Pitfall by Ronald Kelly which was a fun little novel about killer supernatural creatures which humans breed to substitute for dogs for dog fights. Um, it was good, but should you pay $100 for the one copy that's on eBay? No. <laughs> uh, three out of five. 75 was The Umbrella Academy, Volume 1 by Gerard Way. Uh, not as fun as I thought it was going to be. Uh, it was a bit scatterbrained and the characters never really had time to develop. 3 out of 5. And then 76 was The Umbrella Academy Volume 2, Dallas, also by Gerard Way. And this was somehow even less fun and cohesive than the first volume, sadly. So, 2 out of 5. Book 77 was Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones. Stephen Graham Jones is a very polarizing author, I'm starting to find. Uh, but I see that that's precisely where he likes his writing to be. But to me, he reads as just beautifully meditative and he finds horror that lingers in clutter and debris and in i love his method of slipping you into insanity without you noticing i feel like that's quite chilling um this was a four out of five for me book 78 was every shallow cut by tom piccirilli so i read the synopsis of this a uh, long time ago and it said something like a man who has lost it all goes on a final journey of mental deterioration but now that I finally read it, I was sad to see that it lacked a lot of the depth and emotional stakes that I was expecting. But it was still smoothly written and fairly gripping, so 3.5 out of 5. Book 79 was The Diary of a Rapist by Evan S. Connell. Now, Connell really takes the plunge into deviant psychology that very few authors dare to take. Uh, this book is situated perfectly between Lolita and American Psycho, both chronologically, but also in the way that it picks at the societal scabbing from which criminality and monstrosity are birthed. Um, I found that for its time, it was really, really daring and awe-inspiring. So this was a four out of five for me. Book 80 was El Angulo del Horror by Cristina Fernandez Cubas. Now, I never would have known that Spain did quiet and weird horror so pristinely and disquietingly, but here we are, four out of five. Book 81 was Moju the Blind Beast by Edogawa Rampo. This was <laughs> something. It was uh, equal parts irreverent erotic gore and then trope-laden detective story, and I feel like only Edogawa Rampo could juggle those two so seamlessly. This was a 4 out of 5. Book 82 was The Cormorant by Stephen Gregory. A near-perfect, quiet little nightmare. 5 out of 5. Book 83 was In a Shallow Grave by James Purdy. And this is possibly the funniest novel that I read out of these 100. Just gallows humor, wonderfully injected into a wistful story about the social fallout following war. 
great stuff. Four out of five. Book 84 was Cycle of the Werewolf by Stephen King. Somehow, this is the one King title from his earlier era that I didn't read in my teens. And now I read it, and it was... It was just the werewolf story, so... <laughs> yeah. Three out of five. Book 85 was Lizard Wine by Elizabeth Engstrom. This was my first book by Engstrom. And I noticed she has a penchant for taking visibly hurt people and wringing them dry of all their trauma for our shock and awe. And she does so with a very steady and strong hand. And I'm looking forward to reading more of her. So four out of five. Book 86 was The Kidnapper by Robert Block. Uh, definitely not better than Psycho, <laughs> and sadly very predictable, but even here you can see Block having this fascination with sinister psychologies and their genesis, and you can't help but be in awe of his craft even here, so 3 out of 5. 87 was Chambleau by C.L. Moore, uh, the titular story which I read here on my channel. Uh, but this was a wonder set of stories about vampire adventures in space great stuff. Uh, Moore found a way to inject this really disquieting implication into genre thrills and I feel like sci-fi authors and fans alike are all at least to some extent indebted to her so yeah five out of five. 88 was The Crossings by Jack Ketchum. Uh, this was Ketchum's shot at writing a western. <laughs> I read this for June on the Range and I'm sad to report that this is the worst Ketchum title I've read so far. It was just overwrought with ideas, and each of those ideas felt really undercooked. Also, uh, he used a lot of Spanish words in it, and he couldn't even spell them correctly. <laughs> so, two out of five. Book 89 was Daddy's Home by Paul Dale Anderson. Uh, this was a supernatural slasher novel full of murder and mayhem and weirdness. And even with all that, it just made me go, eh. 2.5 out of 5. Book 90 was Introducing Derrida, a graphic guide by Jeff Collins. So I have this urge to understand Derrida and I was on a mission to do so starting here. And after reading it, I think I kind of feel ready to begin thinking about getting ready to understand Derrida. You know, for Derrida, that's as helpful as you can expect a guide to be. So yeah, four out of five. Book number 91 was Michelle Remembers by Lawrence Pazder and Michelle Smith. Full of blatant lies, inconsistencies, dry prose devoid of any style, and then Satan shows up and he starts talking like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I think this is quite simply the worst piece of shit excuse for a book that I've read in a long, long time. So what an honor. <laughs> One out of five. Book number 92 was Las Batallas en el Desierto by Jose Emilio Pacheco. This is a Mexican classic. And as with most classics, I don't know that there's much I'd feel inclined to add. <laughs> Three out of five. Book number 93 was They Thirst by Robert R. McCammon. This was my first novel by McCammon. And uh, I was quite disappointed. Uh, the story started out very intriguing. Then it turned predictable. Then it turned tedious, <laughs> then it picked back up a bit at the end, but overall, I was kind of underwhelmed. And this shit was almost 600 pages, so... Slowed me down on the challenge, not worth it, 2 out of 5. 94 was The Mixquewala Letters by Ana Castillo. Um, I just feel like once in a while, a book comes around to remind you that beauty and power are the primary commerce that words partake in. This was it for me, so four out of five. Book number 95 was Miss Finney Kills Now and Then by Al Dempsey. So Miss Finney Kills Now and Then, but not a lot of shit happens in between the now and then. So <laughs> 2.5 out of five. Book number 96 was Queen of Teeth by Haley Piper. Uh, fascinating concept. It's about vagina dentata, tooth vagina. Uh, it's told a bit clumsily, I felt, and meanderingly. But overall, I mean, it was the daringness of it that kept me going and left me a satisfied reader. So three out of five. Book number 97 was Killing Mr. Griffin by Lois Duncan. Uh, my first Lois Duncan. And I could tell it would be formulaic and predictable, but 
It's Duncan's way of writing mystery that is very inviting. And I was comfortably invested and it actually went places much darker than I would have thought it would dare. So that's always good to me. So three out of five. Book number 98 was Fun Home, a family tragic comic by Alison Bechdel. Uh, this is a graphic novel that is quite possibly the most honest and raw portrayal of family and what those familial bonds are when they're in tension with literally everything else about one's existence. It's gut-wrenching, beautifully presented, beautifully, beautifully illustrated. Bechdel, I feel, is a true visionary artist, and this was a four out of five for me. Book number 99 was The Pack by David Fisher. Um, I thought it would just be killer dogs, and I guess it was, but then it turns into like a siege story, but it's the dogs that are sort of taking over the home. <laughs> and the dogs really kind of come to life as fully fledged characters and their battle against human neglect and stubbornness and ignorance was beautifully mean spirited and cruel. This book really surprised me to be honest. And I gave it a four out of five. And then finally, book 100 was The Tin Angel by Ron Goulart. Um, it has a dancing dog on the cover and that's about all it was about. The fuck is this book? It's just, it, that's it. What a way to close off the fucking challenge. 2.5 out of 5. And there you go. Those are all my 100 reviews for all 100 books that I read for this challenge. What a journey. I, I really feel like having just covered all this stuff that I've been reading for months and months... It, finally covering it here on the channel just feels like such a big big weight off my shoulders i feel like i can finally move on start doing things here on youtube that i want to do without worrying about this challenge and how i'm going to cover these books there they are 100 books reviewed if you want my thoughts on any of them <laughs> feel free to rewind and rewatch and all that so it's out of me it's out of my system i can move on <laughs> i've survived this challenge thank all fuck uh, thank you again to Ollie for, for creating the challenge. It, it really was a very rewarding experience, all things considered. Um, let me know, I don't know, if you're doing the challenge yourself or a version of it. I've seen a lot of people take it on, but they're not doing 100 books. They're doing like 50 or 30. Let me know how it's going for you. Uh, let me know if you're interested in taking on this challenge. I don't know if anybody would be, but... I'd be interested to hear about it. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely recommend it if you feel like you're falling out of step with your reading versus your book acquisition. I would say it's, it's kind of a healthy exercise to undertake all in all. Uh, yeah, um, let me know if you read any of these 100 books that I just reviewed, <laughs> what your thoughts are. I don't know. Let's just talk in the comments. That's, that's really the point of all my videos, honestly. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you to my Patreons for their unending support for this channel. You make all of this so much more easier. Uh, thank you all. I hope you're all well. Continue to stay safe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.